Investment firm ARK Invest, led by Kathy Wood, forecasted years ago that Tesla's multi-year lead in the EV industry and their declining cost curve would eventually mean bad news for competitors in terms of their electric vehicle pricing. Either they keep prices high and their vehicles become less competitive with cheaper Teslas, or they would take the alternative of cutting prices which would crush their margins as they lose money to try and keep up with Tesla. This stance would have typically garnered some laughter as critics of Elon Musk and Tesla have argued for years that the large incumbent automakers know how to make cars better than anyone at a massive scale. Competition is coming and would be the biggest threat to Tesla's greenfield product which has never faced any real opposition in the electric vehicle space. But sure enough, we're now seeing multiple signals from different areas of the legacy automotive space exhibiting a painful realization that ARK Invest has been correct and the bearish mantra being that the competition is coming has manifested as a fallacy where ironically Elon Musk and Tesla are instead the ones bringing the competition. And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and a brand new set of financial data going back 15 years, and it's all freely available. Just today, Ford CEO Jim Farley gave in to competition from Tesla, feeling the heat from the EV maker's massive price cuts. Ford was forced to slash prices on all of its Mustang Mach-E models, as Tesla's bold move is clearly having an effect on the company's sales. As compiled by Car Dealership Guy, the low-end Mach-E's received a $600 to $900 price cut, while the more expensive higher-end models saw prices slash in the range of $3,600 to almost $6,000. These price cuts are minor on the low-end models and have only moved one of Ford's Mustang Mach-E models into the range of being eligible for the Inflation Reduction Act tax credit, moving it below the $55,000 threshold. The price cuts are a bold move by Ford, but still don't compare to Tesla's price drops, which made some of their models up to $20,000 cheaper in some cases when including the credits. Even before any price cuts, Tesla's electric vehicles were outselling Ford's Mach-E by at least an order of magnitude, with about 40,000 Mach-E's sold in 2022. Now inflation has ravaged supply chains, damaging not just EVs on the cost side, but Ford's entire cash cow of a gas-powered business, with their unit sales down to 4 million from 6 million just a few years ago, a 30% haircut. Ford's electric vehicle division is still embedded within its overall vehicle earnings, masquerading the true losses that this business takes. Tesla, for instance, lost money for many years and only broke even when the company was selling roughly over 80,000 cars per quarter on its previous generation technology, something that it appears automakers are still trying to catch up to. There are massive investments needed in batteries, materials, equipment, electronics, and software, including new types of engineering knowledge and talent which the auto industry lacks, having outsourced most of this componentry and software. Back in June of 2022, Ford's CFO admitted that inflation had completely erased the company's EV profits. However, as just described, they are likely only looking at gross margins and gross profits and not counting parts of the business expenses that are shared with the ICE business, as Ford is still nowhere near where Tesla was when they started breaking even. Ford's Mustang Mach-E has also not only suffered from production issues, but when it was torn down by car expert Sandy Monroe, he almost fainted from the poorly designed internals of the vehicle. Ford has also had multiple software issues and recalls, and while the company boasts over-the-air software updates, their recall software fix was only available at dealerships, disappointing customers and taking months to patch their software. Now, a few months later, in August 2022, Ford hiked prices across the board by as much as $8,000 per unit on the Mustang Mach-E, as inflation continued to heat up throughout the year. 
Now with the current prices that were just announced, according to Ford's chief customer officer of their EV business, the price cuts will mean not all Mach-E models based on the trim will be profitable on a per unit basis, confirming that Ford loses money on each car sold, and these cuts may further exacerbate the problem. Yet they plan to increase production from roughly 70,000 Mach-E's to 130,000 per year to of course make up the losses on volume. ARK Invest Director of Investment Tasha Keeney was on Bloomberg just a few days ago after Tesla's price cuts but before Ford's and she spooked investors saying that she would be really worried if she were Ford or the legacy automakers who continue to base all of their sales and cash flows from the rapidly declining ICE businesses. The large automotive companies are indeed well versed in making combustion engine vehicles, but when it comes to connected electric cars that are based heavily in software, they're new to this concept. Take General Motors, which came out today announcing that they would be switching their batteries to cylindrical cells. Specifically, they're considering making 4680 battery cells, which is a design developed by Tesla. Pouch cells have different thermal characteristics than cylindrical cells, which have contributed to numerous Chevy Bolt battery fires. Elon Musk even recommended against using pouch cells due to their dangerous thermal runway. General Motors has since doubled and tripled down on these pouch cells, building their new Altium battery cell factories in partnership with LG. But their fourth battery deal with LG fell through earlier this month when GM made a decision to halt funding of its new plant, as LG reportedly couldn't meet GM's timeline. General Motors still intends to build a fourth battery plant. Perhaps this one will be building 4680s. Now it's taken Tesla years, since even before its 2020 battery day unveil of the 4680, to design and build the equipment for ramping these cells. So far, they achieved a run rate of 1,000 vehicles per week worth of batteries at the end of 2022. While this is still small for Tesla, it would be massive for any other automaker since many have not yet achieved 50,000 electric vehicles per year. But this really shows that if the other automakers decide to follow in Tesla's footsteps, they would be starting off years behind and lacking the specialized technology stack that Tesla has built. This includes acquisitions such as Maxwell Technologies and Hybar, which had integrated into making numerous cell improvements such as dry electro technology, a tabless architecture, etc. Tesla is rapidly working through bottlenecks to boost production, while competitors may only now be starting to sift through Tesla's long list of patents that it filed years ago. While Tesla opens up its patents for anyone to use, automakers would be trying to copy technology that Tesla has already implemented years ago, again illustrating Tesla's multi-year lead. It's fascinating that 4680 specifically were mentioned, as these batteries are essentially invented by Tesla. Elon Musk has stated in the past that he'd be open to supplying other companies with batteries, though it may be too soon for Tesla, as they haven't even ramped up their own yet, and this would be unusual for Tesla to directly aid their competition, such as General Motors. Moreover, just days ago, Toyota president Akio Toyota who is also the grandson of the founder of the company, announced that he would step down as CEO. He stated, When it comes to digitalization, electrification, and connectivity, I personally feel that I belong to the older generation. He says, For me to take a step back is important. Boldly admitting that he may not be the right person to lead Toyota into the future, alluding to the fact that Toyota has lagged in these crucial areas over the past number of years. Now these announcements from Ford, General Motors, and Toyota bring to light Tesla's now dominant industry position, which was critiqued for many years as traditional analysts and naysayers were in disbelief that the legacy automakers could be disrupted by a new technology stack. While there are still many critics of Tesla, it's hard to ignore that even the auto companies are outright admitting that Tesla is affecting their businesses in one way or another. Investors seem to focus their concerns on Tesla and on Elon Musk. However, the true fear lies in that of traditional auto, where investors seem unfazed from the declining sales, expecting them to eventually bounce back, 
just as they always do in the auto industry. But this time may be different. Each of the three aforementioned companies are related in that they all display early signs that management is seeing something wrong with their own businesses. Investor fears are misdirected at Tesla, as meanwhile, traditional automakers are showing cracks in their stories and their dominance in the industry is beginning to crumble. So what do you think the recent announcements from Ford, GM, and Toyota reveal about Tesla's position in the auto industry? And how do you think this will affect investor fears in traditional automakers? Don't forget to watch my previous video on Tesla's Mega Pack secretly helping to sell more vehicles for Tesla. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.